Okay, from Dune, we have cinematographer Greg Frazier. He's also the cinematographer for The Batman, by the way. Hi, Greg. I tried to get a good shot coming out here, but it didn't really work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to have to show everyone. Okay. No, it's not, it's not working. It's not working at no, all, right? No, I need to relight this. Okay. <laughs> well, what would Denise say? Um, I think he would uh, be very gentle and go, okay, let's take a step back. Let's figure out how to get this lit properly. <laughs> I probably wouldn't tell him that I can't light it. I'd probably just pretend that I could and keep going. So I bluffed my way through it. <laughs> um, Denis has been wanting to make Dune since reading the book when he was a teenager. Um, what did he say to you when he first gave you that phone call? Um, it was a long conversation and he kind of talked about the characters first. And he talked about the, not the scope of the film and not the, the scale of the, of the problem ahead, which is how to adapt this book into a film. He talked about Paul and Paul's family. It was about a, a family film. I mean, he didn't sort of try and sugarcoat it into making it a, a small independent film, <laughs> but he did talk very specifically about the family, that it was a, a, a story about a, a, a boy who wanted to be somewhere where he wasn't and that he, he had dreams of being in a place where he wasn't. And it was something I could relate to. You know, I could relate to, you know, not being fully fulfilled where you were. And where do you go from that point? And, and how do you get there? So is it your fault that every time I see a clip from this film or I watch that film, I get more and more emotionally attached to these characters? Uh, yeah, I, your framing. Yeah, I would partially believe that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you, we talk about where the, the film is shot in Jordan, yep. working with natural light. How did you approach working in that blazing desert sun? I mean, it, it helps to have good equipment and it helps to have good crew because if you, uh, um, try, and, if you try and sort of uh, um, fight against the sand, if you fight against the sun, then it doesn't work. So you have to go with it and you have to go, uh, you, your crew has to also go with it. So it was very, uh, um, it was hard. But I must say that the desert's a, an amazing place to shoot, you know. And anybody that's spent time in the desert will realise there's a certain spirituality when it comes to the desert. And visually, that spirituality presents itself on camera. You just have to be willing to accept it. It sounds a little hippie. Apologise, <laughs> but if you allow the the desert to give you its rich richness and its riches, then it will it will reward you for it. So, in contrast to the desert, you had Patrice Vermette's incredible sets that he built, and the interiors were not as blaze. You, you didn't have blazing sun coming in through the windows. Talk about lighting those sets. Well, part of the problem, part of the joy of having fantastic artwork is that you have inspiration. So, I don't know if anybody's seen Patrice's art, that the art of June that, that he did. It's incredible. The, the, the paintings and the drawings are fantastic. But the reality is that you've only got a limited space to light. And technically, and it's a little boring, but then you start getting into the point where people want to build sets right to the walls, but then you have to put lights through them. And so there was a bit of a tussle early on between Patrice and I about like, hang on, don't build it so close to the walls because I can't light. And he's like, yes, but it's got to be big. And I'm like, but I can't light. But it's got to be big, but I can't light. So then this thing was like, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Like, you can build a set the size of, you know, the biggest stages in Oregon, in, in Hungary. But if you can't light them, no one will see them. So it's a, it's a bit of a DP thing. You know, it's the same with the sound recordist, I think. When sound recordists don't get their ability to record sound properly, they don't, they, they, you know, they say this is, this is a movie with sound, not a, not a silent film. So. It was the same, same theory. We had a little tussle, but in a good way. We were a very, very good uh, discussion that we had together. What was the most challenging scene for you to light? It was probably the scene that you just saw. Um, the, and that's why I really liked that scene, because there's, there's, two, there's two parts of that scene. There's the, the lab, where Paul's having the conversation with Kynes. And then it cuts to outside where the Sadaka drop down and are attacked by the Fremen. And those two places, one was studio and one was 
outside a studio um, because it involved natural light and involved scale. So it may not have looked like a complicated scene, which is good because I hope it didn't, but, but, but trying to create those shafts of light on the ground for the Sadaka to come down, to land and to walk and then to be attacked. I mean, we had to do that sort of at the same time every day for about four days in a row to make sure the sun was in the same spot. So it was a little, it wasn't that complicated, but it was just tricky, you know? Yeah. Incredible work. Stay put. We have a clip next from Encanto, and we'll see you back for the panel. Cool. Session.